In 1959, in Petrolona, northern Greece, a shepherd came across a small opening to a cave, which became visible when a thick covering of snow finally melted. He gathered a group of villagers to help him clear the entrance so they could go inside and explore. They found a cave rich in stalactites and stalagmites, but they also found something surprising, a human skull embedded in the wall. The skull's anatomical characteristics indicate that it belonged to a figure transitioning from Homo erectus to Homo sapiens. After much research and debate, it is believed to be 200,000 years old. The skull represented an important piece in the puzzle of human evolution. It is now considered the Parthenon of paleontology, and has been studied by some of the greatest paleoanthropologists in the world. Although the jaw is missing, the cranium is almost complete, and it is similar to specimens discovered at Kabwe, in Zambia. All of these combine primitive traits, prominent brow ridges, a ridge along the rear of the skull, and thick brain case bones, with other modern characteristics, including a somewhat larger brain, of later Homo species, such as Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis, and modern humans, Homo sapiens. Evidence is accumulating that the hominid cranium found in the Petrolona cave is the most complete middle Pleistocene cranium yet discovered and provides important morphological, metrical and radiographic information on the possible evolutionary transition from Homo erectus to Homo sapiens. The Petrolona fossil would be allocated to Homo sapiens rather than to Homo heidelbergensis or to a subspecies of Homo sapiens. Extensive study of the morphology of the skull indicates more accurately that the skull is 300,000, or 400,000 years old. This is particularly important for the study of the evolution of the human species as well as for its presence on the European continent. Furthermore, a study by Professor Chris Stringer of the British Museum has identified a unique trait in the skull, hollow brow ridges. This trait has only been found in two other skulls, both in Africa. The Carbway skull and the Bodo cranium. This feature is very unique and may be the defining characteristic of archaic Homo sapiens for the lack of a better word. Hollow brow ridges would have allowed for larger frontal lobe development, and is an indication that the fearsome brow ridge was becoming less important as a biological trait. Today, some academics who have analyzed the Petrolona remains say, that the cranium of Petrolona belongs to an archaic hominid distinguished from Homo erectus and from both the classic Neanderthals, and anatomically modern humans, but showing characteristics of all those species. A skull dating back 300,000, which is archaic Homo sapiens is in direct conflict with the out-of-Africa theory of human evolution. Further excavations continued in the cave of Petrolona include remarkable findings like fossilized pieces of wood, an oak leaf, animal hair and coprolites, which enabled accurate dating, as well as the almost continuous presence of stone and bone tools from the layers of sediment within the cave. The skull is so perplexing in its morphology, that some paleontologists believe it represents an intermediate state between Homo neanderthalensis and its more primitive ancestor, the Petrolona man, as paleontologists named the skull, actually shares many common features with other Neanderthal fossils, but there are also very primitive features. In general, it has the face of a Neanderthal but the skull of an archaic type. The skull was originally classified as Homo neanderthalensis, but was later redefined as Homo erectus. Today, however, most researchers agree that it belongs to the species of fossils found in Atapuerca and elsewhere in Europe, Homo heidelbergensis. The age of the Korb skull is difficult to establish, but animal fossils also found at the site imply a date of 500,000 to 300,000 years ago. Originally it was classified as archaic Homo sapiens, but then reclassified as Homo heidelbergensis. These archaic Homo sapiens, fossils dated to between 600,000 and 200,000 just before the Homo sapiens appeared in Africa. It was made necessary to assign them to a species which demonstrated an evolutionary path between Erectus and modern humans, being also the ancestor of Neanderthals. Homo heidelbergensis was the chosen name, although there was not any complete description of this species. The most recent paleogenetic studies indicate the split between the Neanderthal and the modern human lineages occurred between 550,000 to 765,000 years ago. 
the Maurer mandible dated to 600,000 years ago is the oldest Homo heidelbergensis, and other specimens traditionally assigned to Homo heidelbergensis are more recent than that. Both considerations imply that Homo heidelbergensis cannot be the common ancestor of Neanderthals and modern humans. According to a paper, titled, The Significance of the Hominid Skull from Petrolona, Greece, radiographs provide important information on the evolutionary development of features such as the frontal sinus. Previous evolutionary schemes have argued for a gradual increase in frontal pneumatization in the later evolution of Homo sapiens. And in the case of the Neanderthals the lateral extension of the frontal sinus has been seen as a specialized evolutionary development. One of the most striking features of the lateral view of the cranium is the projecting supraorbital torus, aka brow ridge. The frontal sinus occupies the entire breadth of the supraorbital torus except for the parts lateral to the orbits, and although the medial height of the sinus is comparable to that of the archaic Homo sapiens cranium from Broken Hill, called Carbway, the total area pneumatized is much greater in the Petrolona specimen. According to another study titled, Nasopharyngeal morphology contributes to understanding the muddle in the middle of the Pleistocene hominin fossil record. Homo erectus exhibited a tall, narrow nasopharyngeal shape, a robust, ancestral morphology, whereas Carbway and Petrolona plotted along the same lineage as Homo sapiens, as shown in this graph. Carbway marked with a K and Petrolona marked with a P. Another question is the nature of the last common ancestor of the Sapiens and Neanderthalensis lineages, and when they lived. Shape resemblances between the Carbway and Petrolona crania indicate the existence of a widespread Middle Pleistocene population. What's more, this species represents the most reasonable last common ancestor for the Neanderthalensis and Sapiens lineages, with their common origin placed at about 400,000 years ago, based on the estimated DNA evidence. Furthermore, a study using geometric morphometrics of various crania to virtually reconstruct the last common ancestor of Neanderthals, and modern humans also found, that an Afro-European human species most closely approached the hypothetically reconstructed last common ancestor, with the added suggestion that the last common ancestor most likely lived in Africa. New genetic data add further complexity to reconstructing the nature, and dating of the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and modern humans. As already mentioned, DNA indicates that the last common ancestor lived approximately 400,000 years ago. However, the clear Neanderthal morphological and genetic similarities of the Sima fossils, dated to at least 400,000 years ago, suggest there was probably an evolutionary divergence well before that date. Moreover, using the latest estimates of the autosomal human mutation rate, the divergent state of the Neanderthalensis and Sapiens lineages can indeed be placed earlier, between 550 and 765,000 years ago, which would be consistent with only the oldest suggested examples of Heidelbergensis as potentially representing the last, common ancestor. One of the oldest and most enduring human creations is art, which brings me to the sponsor of this video, Masterworks. With over 75 years of art buying experience, Masterworks is one of the largest buyers in the art market today. Masterworks was founded by a top, 100 art collector and serial tech entrepreneurs who have founded companies valued at over $1 billion. Why invest in the art market? Art is a growing market, not correlated to stocks and bonds, it is not volatile, and outperforms both the S&P and other asset classes during periods of inflation. Billionaire investor and hedge fund manager Ray Dalio has called art the holy grail of investing. The total wealth held in art is estimated to be worth $1.7 trillion, and Deloitte projects it to grow an additional $900 billion by 2026. Masterworks is the platform for investing in contemporary, blue-chip art, that is democratizing the art market by allowing anyone to buy and sell fractional shares in high-value works of art. Indeed. Billionaires have been quietly diversifying their portfolios with art for years. Now Masterworks allows investors like you and me to diversify as well. There's currently a waitlist to sign up for Masterworks, but with my exclusive code you can skip the waitlist and start investing today. In a brand new study, titled Frontal Sinuses and Human Evolution, researchers concluded, the frontal sinuses are cavities inside the frontal bone located at the junction between the face and the cranial vault and close to the brain. Despite a long history of study, 
understanding of their origin and variation through evolution is limited. This work compares most hominin species holotypes and other key individuals with extant hominids. It provides a unique and valuable perspective of the variation in sinus's position, shape, and dimensions based on a simple and reproducible methodology. They also observed a covariation between the size and shape of the sinuses, and the underlying frontal lobes in hominin species from at least the appearance of Homo erectus. The results additionally undermine hypotheses stating that hominin frontal sinuses were directly affected by biomechanical constraints resulting from either chewing or adaptation to climate. On the basis of the frontal sinuses, there appears to be an evolutionary relationship between Homo neanderthalensis and one group, which may be called Homo heidelbergensis, while the group containing Broken Hill aka Carbway, aka Homo rhodesiensis, has a unique morphology that supports a distinct status. Homo rhodesiensis, and other African fossils of this period, have recently been renamed as Homo bodensis, after the Bodo cranium. Broken Hill is at the upper extreme of variation, while Bodo and Petrolona have the largest sinuses in the entire sample. Broken Hill, Petrolona, and Bodo have large values on the first axis and are isolated on this axis. Bodo is dated to 600,000 years ago and is from Ethiopia, while Broken Hill, from Zambia is dated to 300,000 years ago, and Petrolona from Greece is also dated to 300,000 years ago. Though these dates are not without controversy. If Bodo is the oldest, then the geography makes sense because Ethiopia is centrally located between Greece and Zambia. The Homo neanderthalensis and most European Middle Pleistocene hominin distributions overlap partly in both analyses. A group composed of Broken Hill, Bodo, and Petrolona plots outside of the distribution of all other hominin samples due to their much larger sinuses. High levels of variation in sinus size and shape are visible among middle Pleistocene hominins, particularly because of the huge pneumatization of Bodo, Broken Hill 1, and Petrolona. These individuals are unique in terms of the size and shape of their sinuses, which might support their grouping in a separate taxon that could be called Homo rhodesiensis due to the presence of the holotype of the species in the group. The other European Middle Pleistocene specimens, to the exclusion of Broken Hill, Bodo, and Petrolona, if grouped into Homo rhodesiensis, exhibit a coherent morphological pattern of frontal pneumatization, which differs from the other groups. Indeed, Carbway is an extremely well-preserved specimen that displays a very prominent brow ridge containing a very well-developed frontal sinus with a honeycomb-like structure within it. This is similar to the Petrolona skull in which the presence of honeycombing is suggested to reflect loading history. The skulls of Petrolona and, to a somewhat lesser degree, Broken Hill are extremely pneumatized. Previously undescribed features associated with pneumatization are detailed, along with their possible functional significance, polarity, and potential for understanding hominid cranial variation. Petrolona and Broken Hill also exhibit a dramatic suite of cerebral features that is probably related to extensive pneumatization of the skull, namely frontal lobes that are tilted and located behind rather than over the orbits, laterally flared temporal lobes, marked occipital projection, and basal location of the cerebellum.